The songs for the first album were written over a three-year period after we got a publishing deal with ATV Music. We didn't have a recording contract. They were very confident that they'd be able to get us signed very quickly, and it didn't turn out that way. So then what happened was we would try to write each time that we were sit, sitting down to write, we were thinking about writing a single, and then we'd go in the studio, ATV would pay, we'd record a demo, everyone would get hopeful, the manager would go off and see all the record companies, and they would say, that's real good, lads, but it's not quite the one. So each song that we wrote for that first album was an attempt at, an, at a single. They were all much more commercially oriented songs. Having had the luxury of a little success, the record company was behind us to give us the time that we needed to try and write and come up with something that was at least quality wise as good as what we'd done that had taken us three or four years and um, we wrote uh, two or three songs sending them one by one to the record company they said yes these are potential singles so we just then relaxed a bit and wrote the songs that came out and as I say it wasn't a conscious change that's just what happened when we sat down to write really. The other thing that the band are particularly good at is releasing a good 12 inch single which isn't a rip off of the market it doesn't actually um, just an extension of the single it's actually remixed completely basically. Do you do any of that yourself or is that engineered by other people? No, we're always there. We've been there all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's a team effort, you know, the engineer, the producer, uh, Alan Murphy, our guitarist, Richard and I, uh, the producers, keyboard player and so on. It's, a, you know, everyone kind of sits around in the room and we all discuss ways of making the song sound better in a 12 inch version. I mean, none of us really go to clubs. And if you do, ch if we do listen to a 12 inch to see what other people are doing, it always tends to be a very mundane, unimaginative or almost always a rather unimaginative arrangement. So we just decided, well, there must be something more you can do. And if you were prepared to spend a bit more money and take a bit more time, I think the end result is just a little bit more interesting. How did you actually first get started as a band? Now, I've known Richard 12 or 13 years now. Uh, I read a review of his band in the local paper. We both lived in uh, the West London area, Twickenham. We were both in bands that were trying as hard as they could to sound like free, Paul Rogers being my personal inspiration at that time. So I went along to see Richard's band and see what the competition was like. I hit it off with Richard and uh, well, neither of us had much money at that time but he had quite a record collection and I didn't so I spent a lot of time at his place listening to records and just getting influences and he would tell me that such and such a thing was good and I'd say oh is he and then I'd have a listen and and just so really that we became friends in that way but we were both still doing day jobs and the last kind of paid job before this that I had was working for Mecca. I was working at um, Tiffany's in Sheffield. I think it's called Tiffany's anyway. And Richard would drive up to Sheffield uh, once a month or so with all the records that he'd bought and the videos that he'd taped and we'd kind of consume non-stop for 48 hours. Again, all just drawing in influences and stuff like that and discussing the idea, probably over a nine month period, that's how fast we worked, discussing the idea of uh, perhaps writing together one day and then we just sat down to it. But there was never really any master plan to conquer the world as I keep reading Duran Duran, always were very sure of where they were going right from day one, whereas Richard and I have almost always kind of stumbled across the luck we've had, if you like, just because we've, our attitude is more to have some fun. Finally, I mean, how do you actually write a, a hit single or a record of any sort? Richard and I, in, in the case of the songs in the first album, Richard and I would get together, set aside some time, and then we'd sit in front of a keyboard in the first place and just mess around. That's always the fun part because you've got no restrictions at that stage. You're just trying to think, right, what would sound nice? And uh, neither of us are virtuoso players we just play well enough and have good enough ears to be able to hear you know the potential of a certain chord sequence or whatever uh, the difficulty always comes when you've got a basic melody you've got the arrangement of the tune and the chord sequence and then you've got to start writing the words we try to base the songs more on real life situations rather than trying to find uh, eight options of how to write my baby's left me or i've left my baby or whatever because um, that as lyrically is obviously restricting so uh, this time we kind of stretched out a bit and I found that was interesting and helpful to to do a bit of research into situations like Edward G Robinson's problems with the McCarthy era and all that kind of thing yeah it was it was interesting but I yes I mean we just we just mess around really that's how we write so that's that was the short answer to your question